my favorite things about your story is how your how your mom said, no, I'm not going to buy you that handbag or that purse, but I'm going to teach you how to sew. And that was the beginning of your journey. And, oh, I feel like that is so huge. I mean, one of the most defining things I feel like of my childhood is I was really into gaming and I saved up all my babysitting money to buy a PSP. It was $350, 361 tax. And I remember being so excited going to GameStop, making that purchase. But then when I got there, I realized, oh my gosh, I don't have enough money to buy a game. And so, of course, when you're a kid, you're like, mom, please, like, can you just buy me a game? I, I saved up all this money for, for the PSP. And she was like, no, no, but hey, a neighbor just moved in um, with kids. We should stop by and see if they need a babysitter. And I remember being so defeated, but so many of those experiences like that have, have defined my life because you associate, hey, if you want something, you got you to gotta work for it. Um, and I feel like that is a theme in, in so many people's lives or their childhood if they have any amount of success. So you, as now a mom of three, I imagine you can buy your kids whatever they want. And I'm sure when you have children, you want to give them whatever they want. So how do you navigate that now? I say no all the time and I have to remind myself it literally no comes out of my mouth more, more than you'd care to hear. And every time I do it, I'm like, but I'm damaging them, but I'm damaging them because I remember how shitty it felt when I was said no to. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, wait, just remember. And I'll always say, no, I'm not going to buy that for you, but you can earn it. And here's how you can earn it. And so, you know, we obviously buy them things if they've achieved whatever certain mm -hmm. certain benchmarks in school or gotten a good report card all that but i think for the most part i i'm you know i'm always saying no and i think it's important because i think they have to know that they have to work for what they want mm -hmm. um i listened to a podcast and this mother was like my kid will get a cell phone and a car when they've created a job that creates income wow. and so it forced her son to start researching stuff and creating a business at the age of 16 Love and that. now he's making money. And, I'll, and so I said that to my eight-year-old. I said, if you want a phone, uh, you can create a business and you can make money and that's how you're going to get your phone. So he's, the wheels are turning. He hasn't accepted it yet, but we're, we're working on it. That is awesome. What are some of his ideas? Does he go straight to, okay, Fortnite gamer or <laughs> I like, what is that world like for, for a kid his age? Well, so for a minute, he and my daughter were like, let's be YouTubers. And so we, my husband and I, my husband's a director. So he gave them kind of a quick tutorial on how to make a video. And then for four hours, we don't know what they did, but they made the dumbest video. That was so cute. And then they were like, oh, that was too much work. We don't want to be a YouTuber. So, um, you know, he's a musician. He's an incredible drummer. So, you know, I'm, I don't want to push him, but I'm hoping he goes in that, in that vein. I love that. That's so cool. Well, hey, if you guys ever, I don't know if you're in New York now, but if you ever come back and they, they want to come to a YouTuber studio and see the behind the scenes, hit me up. Okay. They would love that. They <laughs> yeah. would love that. Yeah. But man, that's, I feel like that's so huge. Even though I don't have kids now, I feel like I'm always thinking about, um, cause there are some things in my, in the back of my brain where I feel like I still have a little bit of an edge. Like, why didn't we do that? Why didn't we have that? And when I work, I think, oh, it's, you know, to give my kids all of those things. But then you think, okay, well, why am I the way I am? It's right. because of those, those, those scenarios. Yeah, you get to work for it. Yeah. I mean, my first sewing machine I bought, babysitting money. Barbies, I had to have the 90210 limited edition Barbie set, babysitting money. You know, like everything was, you know, my mom was like, I'll pay for your class that'll teach you it and I'll pay yeah. for the materials, but that's yep. it. Um, and so I had the supplies to make stuff, but I had to do that stuff. And I, and I, I think more people could take that approach with their kids and, and grow people that know how to do shit. Yeah. Oh, that's so huge. If for the people who are watching the video episode, let's see if I can get these in the shot. So these, these are Jeffrey Campbell sneakers that I wanted so bad in high school. And the moment I got a scholarship for engineering in college, my mom surprised me with these and it was, it was so, it's like, oh my gosh, I wanted these sneakers so, so much. And it's cool. Also like six years after seven, how old am I? 20, 
I don't even want to do that math, but they, they're still, <laughs> there's, they still exist. And this was like my first pair of shoes that was beyond a hundred bucks. Do you stockpile? Like when you have a favorite item, do you buy it in multiples? I do with t-shirts. Okay. So I'm a very like t-shirt wearer type person. When I find one, I just buy all of them in multiple different colors. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And then when it comes to, you know, I'm a huge, I love sneakers. And so this has been, I don't wear them all the time because they literally have spikes at the end of them. <laughs> um, but it's so fun also to have things that associate with, hey, this was like an accomplishment. I dropped out, but hey, I got that scholarship. Shout out to Jeannie, my mom. <laughs> I talk on this podcast all the time about my woes with delegation because I'm naturally a messy creative person. So explaining things to people is just my hell. I mean, it's just the worst, but I've learned, I've grown. But at the same time, it's, it's so cool to hear that, man, you never really grow out of creating for yourself. I, I feel like if you have a creative brand or you're trying to sell a product and the channels to sell that product are these these creative platforms where people respond to you and things captured in a unique way you're never really just gonna like set it and forget it and kick your feet back and just you know ah it's figured out most yeah. definitely not and i think that that's another disillusion that people need to sort of do away with is like i even had it i was like oh when i get to be x in size like this company life will just become so easy that's what I was playing in my head too. Oh, no, <laughs> no, it's not. I have yet to meet an entrepreneur and I, and I know a lot of them that feels that way, you know, some of the biggest companies around and they are stressed the F out. Yep. Yep. It never ends, especially when you are the boss and you only answer to yourself. Right. So that means there is no one else to blame. No. <laughs> and that's it's sometimes, you know, exhausting. getting through your own dreams. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I also want to dispel the idea that it's a bad thing, right? Right. Like the stress, the, the problems, it's just part of it. Like a child doesn't know that something smells bad until an adult says that's stinky or that's gross, right? Yep. Prior to that. So it's like, we have to also do away with the idea that this journey, if it's hard, it's bad. Or if you're stressed out, it's bad. It's just part of it. And we just have to accept it and sort of rewire our brains mm -hmm. that like, oh, this is, this is actually the ingredients to this cake. Oh, that's huge. And you have to learn how to love the journey. I know that sounds cheesy, but like, cause it never, you never arrive, especially for people who want to, I mean, it's weird that kids want to be YouTubers now because when I was in college doing an engineer major, it was, it just seemed like YouTuber wasn't a thing, but oh, right start posting videos and oh there's some traction and usually the people who rise to the top are the people where it wasn't a job in the beginning and so I feel like it's it might be better for those people because they learn okay it is the journey this isn't even a job but it's what I love it's my passion and so I, I think people have a unique journey now who see the job yeah but people are already there and it's already a thing and they almost have an uphill battle because they see the, the ending and it's always being obsessed with the outcome. But right. then if you never get there, then you're not going to be happy. No, you won't be happy. And I think that you can't do it for the wrong reasons. You right. know, you really have to do it because you love it. It's, it is your passion right. uh, and it can't be anything else. It can't be because you want to be rich or you want to be a celebrity or you want people to like you. It really has to be like, I love this no matter what. There was an actress that I interviewed um, named Jess Garcia, and she was like, I was on a TV show not being paid enough and waiting tables, but I loved being an actor on this show so bad that it didn't matter that I was doing that or that I couldn't pay my bills. And it was just like that you have to go into it because it's hard enough and you won't make it if it's just about the money or the fame. Mm -hmm.